it would be very, very wrong to think that these kind of illegal operations will stop just by Ollie North's disappearing, because uh, the motives to generate these kind of agendas are still there. And the powers that were collected in his name, his office, as far as I know, they are still there. In times of passion and in times of great fear, what to the uh, eyes of the person and the mind of a person in time of relative peace and stability seem impossible, become very real, very logical, very possible. One of the most threatening developments surrounding these revelations is the use of money raised through illegal activities to influence the American electoral process. There are growing indications that large amounts of offshore money are being funneled to conservative political action committees to mount campaigns against liberal congressmen up for re-election. They have set themselves up as an independent government outside of our country's shores operating out of private corporations with hundreds of millions of dollars at their disposal and they will not be told no not only they won't be told no by individual congressmen because they will smash them politically they've moved money into these packs from offshore to help fund these campaigns against people who don't support their policies we've come actually full circle where these people over on the hill are intimidated that they're afraid of having a whole campaign launched against them in their congressional district. Hey, you know, in the 70s, there was a congressman or two who really stood up to the CIA. There was Congressman Pike, uh, who brought out a very, very critical report on what the CIA had been doing. And that man was destroyed. His report never even got to Congress. I mean, there was Senator Clark, for example, of the Clark Amendment, which stopped operations in Angola prohibited the CIA from operating there. A lot of money came into his state in the next election. They said it was South African money. Who knows? And he was defeated. Senator Church, who led the overall critique of CIA operations, a lot of money came into his state of Idaho in the next election, and he was defeated. So congressmen can see who has the power and who has the money in these things. and. Every now and then, one or two of them will stand up and oppose them, but they need an awful lot of encouragement from the people before they're going to take on such powerful enemies. Do you think the Iran-Contra scandal will have an effect on future government operations? No, I think it will be more the same. I don't think that it's going to have much of an effect at all. I just think that they'll be more careful next time. They will continue to carry on covert operations. I think this has been going on forever. They make laws which are for us that they don't seem to be able to, uh, they don't apply them to themselves very often. And who is going to inhibit them? The gangsters that are running this country is going to inhibit somebody. What's happening here, my friends, is a major deception, a major deception which is in process as we stand and talk tonight. A major deception in the same way that the Warren Commission was a major deception worked upon the American people. The same way that the Watergate investigation was a major deception worked upon the American people. Just like the bombing, the secret bombing of Cambodia was kept secret and was a deception worked upon the American people. How long, how long are we going to stand for being deceived in this manner? We will have to make a decision as a country, both Congress and executive, that we will not tolerate this kind of activity and we will go after the perpetrators. These people do have faces when we talk about the shadow government or we talk about the secret team. It's not something totally amorphous. These people are identifiable and can be brought to justice. Assassination, drug smuggling. If they had pursued that line of questioning, uh, they would have soon gotten themselves into a position where they would have had to impeach someone. They could track that right back into the White House. They could put it at least right, un right under the nose of Ronald Reagan. This is the major constitutional crisis since the Civil War. You have a president who is unaccountable and says that uh, it's his interpretation of what laws he'll select to obey. When you have that, you have a constitutional crisis. All of these things that have been alleged for years and have been speculated and have been charged, 
and have been consistently denied are being confirmed. And these documents have shown uh, an incredible array of efforts, all of which were denied to Congress repeatedly uh, and flat out lies by top members of the administration and by the president. It is not uh, a CIA gone wild or a secret government operating it on its own. It's a group of people doing things with the authority of and the, at the direction of the White House. Covert operations have never done this country any good. They may be of momentary advantage to the people who are in power at a particular moment, but in terms of the interests of this country as a whole, they have proven disastrous. There isn't a single one in 30 years that you can point to and say, well, that was one that we are now more secure, better off, and happier as a result of. Every one of them has in its own way contributed to the deterioration of security in the world that we live in. And so it's really time to stop them. Instead of operating within rules and law, we have been supplying lethal weapons to terrorist nations, trading arms for hostages, involving the U.S. government in military activities in direct contravention of the law, diverting public funds into private pockets and secret unofficial activities, selling access to the president for thousands of dollars, dispensing cash and foreign money orders out of a White House safe, accepting gifts and falsifying papers to cover it up, altering and shredding national security documents, lying to the Congress. Now, I believe that the American people understand that democracy cannot survive that kind of abuse. There was a time when ignorance made our innocence strong.